Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, we will be uh, talking about um, a new chat initiative that we are starting now, uh, which is called uh, Koi, Microsoft. Chat over IMAP. Recorded, so uh, yeah. people won't hear you shout. Yeah. So mm. you okay. Uh, so, uh, and uh, my name's Robert. I've been uh, involved in various open source projects over the years. In 2004, I started JTME Polish, which was a feature phone framework or an application uh, framework for developing for feature phones. Uh, in 2009, we started the Mobile Developers Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, that's uh, a booklet from developers for developers in the mobile industry. And I bought a couple of copies uh, with me, as well as some, some, some shirts about this project. <laughs> if you like it, please grab your shirt later onwards. And I'm Michael. <laughs> no, but I'm the, uh, for, for those of you familiar with Dovecot, uh, the email server, I'm the product manager for Dovecot. Uh, and we both work for Open Exchange. Yeah. Before we start, can I ask you, like, uh, please raise your hand. Who of you has an active email account? <laughs> Look at all these people with Koi accounts, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously everybody has an active email account. You know, that's something. And, and, and you know, like, if we have, like, one main point in this presentation, it's this. You know, like, everybody already has an email account. And, and this is the main difference that we bring to this table here. So this is being recognized throughout the, the industry. And like even uh, uh, within the marketing uh, spheres, you know, they, <coughs> they uh, actually uh, find out that everybody is reachable via email. Who would have thought that? You know? <laughs> it's even better than WhatsApp, you know? Yeah. Um, and yes, but I feel, looking at the uh, schedule of this room, there's probably a lot of you in here who uh, may prefer other chat protocols, since you're probably asking that the big question is, IMAP is a chat protocol. Uh, does this make zero sense whatsoever? Uh, because generally, IMAP is not designed to um, handle small, uh, small data, low latency messages, because that's really what we just watched Matthew's excellent performance on 90 millisecond or not 90 millisecond, uh, 90 byte packets being sent across the network. Um, and so the question becomes: There are protocols uh, explicitly designed for chat. Why are we not using those protocols? But the big but behind all this is it's the network. I mean, we all, know, we all understand that we just had the, the hands uh, go up. Uh, we have this email network. There's approximately, you know, we're, we're going we're to use the number 3.8 billion, mil, uh, 3 .8 billion uh, unique active email users. So that's it. It's the network. Um, everything else you're, you're hearing of today, I mean, XMPP is great. Uh, Matrix is great. There's all kind of cool things that are coming along with that. But the network is not anywhere near that. So our, our goal or, or the design of this whole project is the idea that we have to tap into this existing network because that means we don't have to worry about the network anymore. That network is hard. Federation is really, really hard. Um, why not use the network that already exists? It already has built-in abuse and security. You have millions of people. I, I say thousands of people. You have millions of people that are involved in the network. Uh, we don't know them. We don't employ them, but they run their, our network for us already. So that is the goal, or that is the, the, the concept of Koi, is how can we take advantage of this network? Um, and the system is fully operational today. All of you have Koi accounts, and we haven't even told you what it is yet. Um, now, for IMAP itself, uh, ag agreed that IMAP is a bit of an old protocol. It can, people, we can sit here and complain about uh, the semantics of the protocol. But it is well known, it's stable, it's, and it's definitely extensible. So there are some tools for us to use to be able to uh, you know, have a baseline of what we can provide today and then extend on top of that. And for the record, I don't know if I see Bron in here, but we had, uh, there was a discussion about JMAP yesterday. This is not specific to IMAP. It's chat over IMAP is in the name. Um, that's for marketing reasons or, or whatnot. Uh, the idea being this is really more chat over email. And so we're using IMAP right now because it is the standard, and it's the standard that we can immediately deploy. But in the future, JMAP would be, uh, would be perfectly fine to use for the, mail, the, the last mile mail transfer part of this. Um, very important about all this, especially when we look at in respect to other chat uh, protocols out there. Generally, your chat ID or your email is your chat ID uh, identifier. But in Koi, that's your account. For example, in Matrix, or Matrix, or excuse me, uh, well, I think in Matrix you can, but XMPP, Jabber, you can use email as an identifier, but that's not your account. You still need some sort of account. In Dove, uh, excuse me, in uh, Koi, that is your account. And so we actually see a world where you, as a chat, cl uh, chat client author, 
can take your chat client that uses email as a potential, uh, you know, as an account ID. And if you implement Koi behind the scenes, you don't really have to do anything authentication-wise or change your login page or identifier. And now you get access to 3.8 billion users, potentially, maybe at a degraded level because we only can do certain things at this point. Um, but we feel that that ri the rising tide lifts all boats. And so that is the goal of Koi is to allow uh, clients to innovate. Um, we're going to give you the, the, the pieces. The pieces already exist in the email, uh, the, the current email network. And um, instead of waiting for a network to build up or working on network issues or, or infrastructure issues, that exists. So the client should be the one driving change and, and innovation in this uh, ecosystem. Robert? Yeah, so that's uh, what I will be talking now about. Uh, we are uh, started with a specification for the clients now. So on wiki.coi slash dev.org, you can uh, show them. We will also publish them on GitHub in due time. Uh, right now, we are finding out and, and uh, talking with everybody about these ideas and um, uh, to, to make it better. Um, so we have some um, design con considerations for the specification. So first of all, we do not want to reinvent the wheel. We want to use open standards as much as possible. We want to use what's out there. So for example, using vCard for the uh, contact data, using existing uh, content uh, disposition notification reports for the read receipts, um, and so on. Um, the important things, like if we have like all these billions of email users, um, is to be actually backwards compatible. So people should be able to join in using their existing email clients. And that's uh, one of the most difficult goals, actually, um, because only then we can really leverage the network. You know? So uh, with this backwards compatibility in mind, uh, we need always to have something to show to the users. You know, so there should always be a text plane or an HTML or a binary uh, message part, for example. Uh, and we also want to make it really, really simple. So in, in group discussions, for example, it's just a subject with a group name. You can just add somebody on two or CC and change the uh, participants list as you would expect from email. Um, in regards to secure messaging, we are not specifying anything that goes against encryption. So we are making sure that uh, all your clients can use any uh, encryption scheme that you want to. Uh, typically, that would be like uh, some sort of uh, GPG or uh, similar uh, encryption. Uh, last but not least, we want to provide some modern uh, uh, user experience on top of email. So for example, uh, people expect that they can also block undesired contacts. Um, they want to edit and delete already sent messages, or <coughs> they want to also sync contacts across uh, devices. Um, and, and these are also goals for, for the specification to make that possible, at least as much as it can be done on the existing infrastructure. Um, now, let me show you some uh, very, very simple examples. So if you have ever, ever written an email, you know, then you, know, you, you will recognize that you know, there's a from, there's a to, whatever. Uh, the only thing that we are doing, like we're heading a uh, chat version header that marks this message actually as a chat. There might be clients who want to differentiate between a chat user experience and an email user experience. And we want to enable that. Uh, and that's why we have this version 4. Now, when you have um, a user of an existing email client that doesn't know anything about the chat version, so when he replies, you know, the question, it's, it's, it's a client to decide, but the question is, uh, will this be a chat conversation or will this be like a traditional email conversation? And if you want to differentiate between that, um, you can still do that because we have, uh, in the message ID, we are starting every message ID with a call dollar sign. And uh, you will um, get this reference in the reply from an uh, existing email client as well. And so you can know, hey, this is originating from a chat context, and this helps you to um, channel it into it. Uh, group messages, very, very simple, same idea, chat version header. The uh, group name is a subject. And uh, additionally, I uh, also add the group ID here uh, after the call dollar sign. And uh, this helps me to uh, also identify groups uh, when uh, I get legacy replies back. Um, to edit messages, again, very, very simple. I, I'm replying to my previous message that I have uh, sent myself. And I, I said, now, chat content edit. Now, on existing email clients, this will be just a duplicate message. But people will uh, hopefully recognize, ah, OK. <laughs> 
the guy had previously made a typo or whatever, now it's edited. And on uh, COI uh, compliant clients, we asked uh, clients to uh, show only the last version uh, of this edited uh, message. But at the same time, we recommend to make the, um, the editing visible uh, and also the history available so that we do not, do not create a false sense of security. So that people think, ah, I've uh, uh, sent something embarrassing, but I can delete it, no problem, because on existing email clients it will still show up, right? So uh, we want to be uh, very honest with the users about that. So um, thinking context is also like just a large message. So we envision we, we want to store this into a specific uh, subfolder. Uh, we suggest call contacts for that. Uh, we will store some metadata about the contact uh, inside here, for example, what kind of groups uh, is this contact associated with or what kind of notification um, does the user want to get when there's an incoming message from that uh, specific user. And then we are also storing the uh, actual data, as I said, like in a plain old Wii card. It's kind of boring, <laughs> but it's, it's a repeating uh, theme in this uh, whole specification if you read through it. We are reusing what's out there. We are not reinventing the wheel. We are just uh, putting things together in a different uh, s sort of way. And um, that is the client specification. And now we are also working on the server side stuff. And with the server side stuff, we get more exciting things to do. For example, you can also automate like this differentiation between chat and uh, normal email messages by uh, like letting the server do the hard work for you, or the server can also block uh, incoming messages for you. Uh, blocking, by the way, means not like deleting any messages. They will just be moved to a blocked folder. Uh, that's at least our suggestion here. Uh, we will enable push notifications. We will uh, probably leverage the um, web notification standard for that. And uh, so you will need to have um, your own middleware that is um, application specific, but it's much, much easier than running your own service that uh, also uh, then requires the user credentials to poll for new messages and then informs your app. Um, we are working on uh, WebRTC implementation uh, on that level to leverage uh, audio and video calls. Um, we are also working on a, um, yeah, some sort of Slack competitor by introducing a channel concept. A channel is a group discussion with uh, additional rights management and uh, also the benefits that you can see the full history when you're joining a channel. And last but not least, we have another interesting idea. This is the direct message submission, and uh, Mike will explain it, how which that gets, works. Yeah, which gets into the idea of now that we have this base spec that works with existing email clients or email servers, how do we extend this, this spec over time naturally and it still works, uh, it's still backwards compatible, and we innovate um, and, and we provide a better experience. And part of that is, is framing the problem as let's not look at email, how, how we, we make this better for, for this COI project. How do we make email better for COI? It's let's look at email in general, find some things we can improve on, and then we can take advantage of that in COI. But then if you walk away from this room and say, screw this, we're going to do XMPP, I, don't, I have no interest in this, maybe this part interests you. Now, this is going to make just the email experience we feel better in general. Uh, and we'll use this one example because this is something that we're working on currently. Uh, and the problem is the email delivery that can be high latency. Um, and an idea would be to, to develop a secure way to, to decrease the delivery times uh, for, for trusted users. So there has to be some sort of trust model built in. The solution is this direct message submission. And again, this is not tied to this particular project. It would be something we would use to make our, uh, the, the, the chat messages over email better. But it's not tied to the project. I'm not sure if anybody here is familiar with mail uh, delivery, so we'll do a quick. This is my example of the mesh. Uh, it's not quite, it's, there's no Docker things being thrown up or anything. This is crappy uh, PowerPoint graphics. Um, but we all know today that the number one use of email is to send around cat memes. Uh, so if you have a cat meme and you want to send from one endpoint to another, the problem is, is, is uh, a routing, a mail routing might go to locally, then you got some uh, bug scanning, then you got outbound, and then you have some fancy, expensive cloud MTA service. Uh, and there's something, you know, there's a, uh, unstable high latency MTA, you know, it could be on the moon. Uh, that's not going to work, you know, you're going to time out. And then, oh, you know, yeah, that MX record doesn't point to anything, so that doesn't work. And then you're going to waste their time. And then, oh, we'll try this again, and that's going to take forever. And eventually, you know, oh, you got to go through the, the bug, bug scanning on that side. And then finally, 
it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's sent to the other side. Now, this is obviously a very contrived example, and most email doesn't work like this. But if you have this as a user experience consistently, this is not good. So the idea being is how do we to sort of get rid of all that mess in the middle and maybe figure out a way to more directly deliver messages to each other. And so the idea being that you uh, just send in a message. You don't have to change your client at all. You send it to a local submission server. This is where Dovecot will fit in. Uh, Dovecot is not only an IMAP server now, we have a submission part of the server that, that ties in with the IMAP server, or I should say mail server. Um, and what that server will do is it will add a token to this message. Now this, and then you're, you deliver the message to the end user, and that end user now has uh, the, the token. So coming back the other way, so we, now we have this token. This, this has to be somebody, you know, the, the, the end user has to be, uh, or, or this area, uh, whatever you have in the end user has to be aware of this submission token process. But it can be on either the client or in, they have a, a like say a Dovecot server also. But that's not important for now. What's important really more is the abstract idea that once you have this token, there's going to be an auto detection method that allows you to find what is the original submission server. Now you have this token. This is done over a secure connection. Uh, so there is some domain checking uh, certificate wise. There may also be uh, D, uh, uh, secure DNS, for example. Um, but once you do that, you, you get a direct connection to the local submission server. So you get, to, you get to avoid all that mass. And then you can deliver the message much quicker. And, um, and this is what we see as being the next step. And now me as you know, being, a Dovecot, being on the Dovecot side, we have a fairly large reach of uh, our servers. So we feel that one thing that we can do is kind of push forward these kind of standards to make mail better. And actually, we already have a, a built-in user base that may be uh, interested in using these kind of uh, improvements to mail. And then hopefully other people would agree and then join us um, as we work on these kind of uh, efforts. And so what's important about all this, too, is it's transparent to end users. End users don't even know this is going on. It can be supported by the client unidirectionally. It works better if you have a server. But uh, you know, if you're, you as a client author, if you wanted to add this, you could do that uh, by, on your own. And this is mail a API ag agnostic. It's, it's, this is actually SMTP side of things, not IMAP. So this works for any you know, future JMAP or, or whatever you want to use to access your mail. Yeah, OK, about. <laughs> Back from the future. Yeah, so th that's the future. It's, it, the future is exciting, wide open, but uh, Robert's going to show you what we have currently. Yeah. So uh, what are we working on? We are working on, for example, on OxTalk, which is like our, will become our flagship product. And uh, we are almost running out of time, so I will be very quick. It's uh, MPL license, so it's completely free to use, commercially reusable. Uh, we are cooperating with data chats there. We are reusing the data chat core library. Um, it's on GitHub. You can... Uh, already uh, check it out. It's in very, very early technical preview. You know, it contains many bugs, but at least it allows you to exchange messages already. Um, we are, uh, are working with several partners. Uh, I already mentioned Delta Chat, cool product. Uh, check it out. Um, Spike is another conversational email experience, and they uh, want to become call compatible in the future. We are talking with Thunderbird. We are very open to talk to any uh, email service. If you have any ideas around that, if you have maybe already uh, an existing chat client and you want to really leverage some of these billions of users on email, it might be a good idea to also uh, integrate Choi compliance into it. That's very easy. Um, now I'm skipping this slide because uh, that pretty much only sums up what we have and we are running out of time. <laughs> uh, so thanks for your attention, and uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. Of course, I have many questions. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We need the mic. So one question. One one question. Yeah. Yep. You get one, one question, Bron. One. <laughs> Why are we so awesome? That's easy to answer. Uh, this is more a comment than a question. Yeah. No, um, the extra working group at IETF is doing IMAP extensions right now, and we are looking to recharter, having done most of the IMAP extensions that are, are sitting in the queue. Uh, one of them is IMAP submit, which I think would fit in very nicely there. And the other thing we're looking at rechartering into is SMTP extensions. Mm -hmm. uh, this looks like a perfect thing to bring. I'd love to see you in Prague in a month and a half. Yes. Cool. Yeah, thanks for that. Hey, you, you, Yes. <laughs> now, where's my boss? He just has to pay for the, the plane ticket. No, that, that's exact. Bron, that, that's exactly, obviously, something we want to work on. Uh, we have some ideas, but we would love to, we, to come love in to, and to bring this through.
through yes. the, the open standardization process. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so th thanks again. Uh, if you want to have a free T-shirt or a booklet, uh, this guide, or we've got stickers, please come to the front <laughs> or talk to us. Thank you.